TGI Fridays. Yeah, just here, you know what I mean? Getting the other groups in, giving people time to get to the show. I know everybody busy. Everybody got shit to do. It was a Friday. I totally understand. But you don't want to miss this show. We got MG coming on. Raider talk about embarrassing loss by the Raiders. And we got sports book ready to bring that heat. You know what I'm saying? Y'all already know, man. Real talk. Y'all already know, man. Let me just get a minute and I'll shout everybody out, man. TGI Friday, man. Real talk. I hope everybody's enjoying no drinking and driving. Just enjoy your night. Have fun. Have that designated driver, man. Lock out in the building. I'll see you. Shook night as always. G man. I gave him my last week. I hope you cashed out. Because if you didn't, I'm going to be really upset with you. Steve Levine in the building, a.k.a. Ghost. Yeah, Lock out about to get lucky real soon. Because she, she fighting, man. Uh, uh, Benny Bellato, a.k.a. Sinbad, I appreciate everybody coming on board. Benny, you got to lock your numbers in. Lock them in so I can have you in no matter what. That last minute shit, it don't work because you know the shit be selling out. So you lock in numbers and I'll lock them in for you. Don't worry about it, my dude. Yeah, yeah, let's just keep getting some people. Then I'm going to give y'all a brief message of the day, just something real brief. Normally I got a little story, but this one's going to be brief. And then we're going to start the show. There's a lot of sports to handle this Friday. A lot of free agency. A lot of shit going on, man. All right, let me see real quick. Let me get more people in before I start my message. Just waiting for a few more cats. Uh, we got a live basketball game right here. The Sixers are beating the Lakers in the third quarter. 846 left. 71-67. Philadelphia 76ers. Okay, um. Uh, I'm going to have to start. We got a shortage right now. Normally, we got about 25 tapping in, and we way shorter than that right now. Message of the day, basically, don't do a pawn of others what you don't like done to you. Sportsbook, I see you, baby. It's simple mathematics. Before you do something to violate another, another individual, especially if you know them, you got to tell yourself, if I do this to this person, would I like it done to me? Jorge, I see you, baby. Jorge, chill. It's the message of the day. We're going to get to the sports, dog. Chill. Message of the day, don't do on to others what you don't like done to you. You know what I mean? If you go to your man's house and you see a watch laying around, don't take it. Because if he did it to you, you be ready to body him. Real talk. Real talk. So don't do a pawn of others that you don't like done to you. If you see your man's girl by herself, she's having issues, you help her out. You don't kick it to her. You don't kick it to her. You help her out. Because if he did that to you, you'd be ready to body him. So you got to look at things both ways and stop being selfish motherfuckers. And as you get older, you learn. When you're younger, you fuck up. I fucked up a lot of times. But as you get older... You learn, don't do a pawn of others, but you don't like done to you. Message of the day. Let's get this shit started, man. Woo! TGI Friday, baby. Al York Sports. The raw truth, baby. We gonna bring it back to Jackson State. This is Dion Sanders' theme song, baby. And the reason why I'm playing it, because there's a lot of shit going on that Dion left them flat. Let me tell y'all something. He went over there, he fixed their grades, got him a chip, had the best record ever over there. His job is done as a, as a, a sibling of God or a kid of God. It's time for him now to go elsewhere and fix other situations up. It was nothing personal over there in Jackson State. So you guys gotta understand that the young people gotta understand he didn't leave him flat. He went over there and turned that whole shit around. Now he's got to move on. And, and, and whatever God got made out for him in the next step. And not to mention, he getting real money now. Over there, he got 300000 Now he got a 30 million, uh, 30 million five-year contract. You can't be mad at him, dog. You can't be mad at him. 
Let's start the show. Go to YouTube, like, share, subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Continue to participate. Guys, if you could put some comments on the YouTube. Stop being lazy and just doing it on Facebook. Go to the YouTube, put some comments. Even if you want to say you don't like my beard. God damn, just put whatever, man. Shout out to the East Coast, West Coast, Midwest, Las Vegas, New York City, LES to the death. Nueva York, Nueva York. Shout out to Syndicate Radio, Dwayne Beeman. Dwayne Beeman, supposed to be a big year for him. Watch out. Also, shout out to Price Tag Entertainment. My man, Royalty, Plu, doing a thing. Another year, another great year about to happen. Let's get it, fellas. Also, shout out to, uh, uh, basically, if you need advertisement, hit me up. And I'll hook you up. Any product you got, let me put it out there and get you more people, which means more money. Uh, you need instrumentals, hit my man Mech one up. And open sessions and giveaways, I keep telling y'all, tell one person, the more, the merrier. Let's start the sports show, which everybody's been waiting for. We're going to start off, we're going to go to the Diamond. Former big league slugger, Fred McGriff, finally made the Hall of Fame, man. Salute to the crime, dog. Fred McGriff. Oh, man, he was a monster. Batting lefty, playing first. Played for the Blue Jays, played for the Braves, and some other teams in the latter part of his career. But he did the most damage with the Atlanta Braves in my book. He did damage with the Jays, but also with the Braves. It's so good to see people that deserve to be in the Hall of Fame more than anything. And salute and God bless Fred McGriff. Go to other news. I got to bring this up right now. Bake Money was just released by Carolina Panthers, I think, on Tuesday. The Rams picked him up uh, on Wednesday, and he had to play on Thursday. Now, I'm a big Baker Mayfield fan, but I have to admit, he's been stinking up to join in the NFL. There's no excuse, just like D Johnny Manziel. But I still believe he has life. I think in a perfect situation, he could excel. Now, Cleveland had a great situation for him, but this is the thing. He's not your natural drop-back quarterback, to, you know, picking people, you know, just picking people apart. That's not his strength. I think a perfect fit for him, even before the Rams, I think would have been the 49ers because the 49ers, if you notice, like they, they just need a game manager. When Garoppolo went to the Super Bowl, what did he do the ball, 16 times? I mean, they didn't even need him to fling it, though they lost, but they should have won. It was up 10 with five minutes, I know, because me and Noah had the Chiefs, and we had to sweat that out. But the moral of the story is Baker Mayfield right now would have been a better fit with the 49ers who need him than having that young boy Purdy out there. That was a bad decision, you know what I mean, by Shanahan and Lynch not to go get Baker Money who was available. Because Baker Money, like I said, if you got him happy and he's in an offense that he could thrive off, like yesterday, he looked real good against the Raiders, but we're going to nip that in the butt, me and MG. I don't want to talk about it, but great pickup by the Rams. Well, Mayfield will basically quarterback all year and then be the backup to Stafford when Stafford gets back. Other news. St. Louis Cardinals, uh, Molina retired last year, one of the greatest in the game. They made a tremendous move by picking up Wilson Contreras. I'm going to get to details on this for my man Sportsbook Jeff. I'm just going to mention it, and then me and Sportsbook Jeff going to break it down. Same thing with this guy here. Philadelphia Phillies picked up Trey Turner. Huge deal for Trey Turner, 11 years, 300 M's. I'll tap on this with Sportsbook Jeff. Okay, Jeff said the Rams were ahead of him on the waiver list. Okay, so that, that makes sense. Jeff, that makes sense, because I was wondering why they ain't go get him, but you just made it clear the Rams were ahead to take his services. Thank you, Sportsbook. Okay, other news, uh, Sander Bogarts, or the Boston Red Sox, signed a huge deal with the Padres, 11 years, $280 million. Yo, these teams are not playing. They throwing money out there again, but this is another topic I'm going to cover with Sportsbook Jeff. Uh, Chicago White Sox picked up the services of outfielder Cody Bellinger, who was with the Dodgers and had an MVP year, but then had a real couple horrible years. Like, it almost like, like I don't know, like he couldn't hit no more. And hopefully he get his shit together. The Cubs signed him to a one-year deal worth 17.5. He hit 210 last year, 19 bombs, 68 RBI. Colin Bellinger 
is a way better player than this. I hope he figures it out because he's got a lot of talent. Other news. Giants agree with uh with outfielder Mitch Hanniger. This was a pickup they got before they thought they were going to get Judge. And if they would have got Hanniger with Judge, from my understanding, from my understanding, they were going to, you know, they were going to continue to pick up a, a lot of other people. Judge, Jeff, I said I meant the Cubs. I think I said Cubs. Look at it again. I think you're hearing shit. Yeah, the Chicago Cubs picked them up. Okay, other news. Uh, and stop worrying about correcting me. Worrying about what the fuck you gonna say on the show. All right, stop nitpicking, dog. All right, other news. Um, the Phillies picked up Tay on Walker of the Mets, another right-handed starter. Phillies are staying busy. Let me tell you something. The Philadelphia Phillies, man. Oh, uh, they just, you know, they taste the chip last year, lost in six games to the Astros, and they ready to come, man. They already picked up another starting pitcher, Trey Turner, who to me is basically the best shortstop in the game right now. What a pickup for the Phillies. First baseman Josh Bell signed a two-year deal worth $33 million to sign with the Cleveland Guardians. Now, what you going to say? I said Indians now. So... This is the big pickup for Cleveland who are lacking hitters. As you notice, uh, Ramirez is basically one of the only cats that can really stick it. You know what I'm saying? Now you ask Josh Bell who does strike out a lot but does put up numbers. Bell hit 266, 17 home runs, 71 RBIs with a 784 OPS. Bell would help them out, but he's not your superior hitter. He will strike out a lot. Other news. Boston Red Sox picked up their closer. They picked up Kenley uh, Johnson, uh, Jansen from the Atlanta Braves for a two-year deal worth 33 amps. Uh, Sports Project didn't like this pickup. He said he's too old. I think it's a good pickup. The American League don't happen seeing him yet. Just like when Clemens went to the National League and the American League was hitting him up, he was able to steal some years in the National League because they wasn't used to him. I think the fact that they're not used to him, he, this is perfect. A two-year deal is perfect for Jansen. Uh, 33 M's, you can't be mad. And last but not least, uh, the 49ers, Jerry Garoppolo, could be available in the playoffs. It's going to be lucky because if, if he can make it, they're going to have to get a bye that first round. If they could get that bye, if they earn that bye, and then maybe he can play in that next week, from my understanding. But he doesn't have to do surgery, but he will be out all the way to the playoffs. So I guess Purdy is going to have to get the Niners through. Now, the Niners are a great team. I picked them to get to the Super Bowl at 18-1. But I'm really nervous now because they ain't got their man. Garoppolo not there. And I don't know Purdy enough. He had a good game last week when he came in but because they wasn't prepared for him. But if you ask me, I don't think Purdy's the answer. And I think the Niners would come up short. Unless they can get to the Jimmy G's game and then he can bail them out. Okay, uh, MG, where you at? Let me see if MG's on board. I haven't seen his name pop up. If he's not available, I'm going to have to just snatch up Sportsbook real quick. Mr. Correction. Mr. Mistake. Hold on, let me see if I can see MG anywhere around. Okay, I don't see MG. Uh, you know what, Jeff? Let's come on. Come on, Jeff. He's taking too long. I ain't got time to make the people's wait. We gotta work, baby. It's a lot of work. We gotta work. Give me a minute, guys. Let me get Sportsbook Jeff in here real quick. Give me one one minute. Hold on, yeah. Give me one minute, dog. I see you with the Raiders. Right you, know, gotta, you ain't got to show it to me. I can see it. Hold on, let me get this uh, earpiece on. If not, I can't hear you, especially with that lung <coughs> body you're still holding. Hold on. Yeah, you ready? I'm ready, baby. All right, let's go, baby. What's going on? First of all, 
since uh, MG, I don't know what happened to him. I'm going to tap it on the conversation. I want to hear your, your perspective on Deion Sanders leaving Jackson State the way he did. Do you have any issues the way Sanders left? I do not because he's going to coach in the uh, bowl game. Them to win the SWAC championship. He committed to finish the season out. Mm-hmm. Um, every kid's able to go and get the transfer portal anywhere they want to go to by the year. Why not a coach? You know, in terms of going to Colorado, baby, I'm coming. Right. I'm coming, baby. You better get ready for me. All you guys aren't ready to play. You better get that transfer portal. But I'm going to come. Right, right, right. Recruiters. I got the best of everything. But I'm coming. And, and let me tell you something. The job he did at Jackson State was impeccable. He took a team that was making no noise and put them on a the map immediately. They immediately got on the map. Not only that, he reached goals in that school that was unheard of. Not only did he get, you know what I mean, he got them, he got them to that conference championship, got them to the bowl game. Um a lot of their percentages on getting their degrees all shot up. So he went over to not only make, created an amazing team, he's creating young men, great young men. Now, I understand that people are going to be sad that he moved on. Who wouldn't be sad? But I don't want people to feel like he did a disjustice. He, he, whatever he had to do with Jackson State, he accomplished it, Jeff. A guy like like Sanders likes to move on after he accomplishes certain things in certain areas. So his next task right now is the Colorado Buffaloes. Well, That's my next question know, to you. In 24 hours since the I'm coming speech, he has a five-star that recruited wide receiver that has recruited and committed to Colorado mm-hmm. and has had 200 phone calls from the transfer portal They've called Colorado wanting to play for Deion Sanders. They have had a 150% increase in ticket sales for the 2023 season. They have had boosters. Even the, even the AD goes, I don't know where I'm going to pay for the salary. But boosters coming out with donations <coughs> and fundraising that's through the roof already at Colorado in 24 hours. Well, you know what I heard? There was a, a thousand transfer um a thousand. Now I'm not saying all going to him, but why is it so much? You know, you know they're coming. They want to go over there. You know what I'm saying? Hold up, my man, my man just put something right here. Hopefully. Yeah, yeah, hold on. Go ahead. Trust me. Dion's gonna get some good bodies over there. Now, is it gonna be a team that's gonna be Alabama and something like that? I will have to say you're gonna have to wait three, four years for something that great to happen. But they will become way better real soon. You agree with me, Jeff? The Jackson State kids are coming, and they were all five-star recruits. They're coming. Right, right, right. But His son and the rest of the guys. Jeff, yep. Jeff, Jackson State guys, to play against SEC teams, you know, the Big Ten and all that, I hope they're ready for that. No, You're those saying, guys we just found out because they were all recruited by Florida State and Georgia. And right. Alabama. And they chose to go play with Dion. Okay, so I hope, yeah, I hope, players. I hope, I hope they're ready because it's a different ball game right now. You know that, and I know that different ball game. But I guess you're on the same page with me where you Dion didn't do nothing wrong. He's just moving on, and he's ready to take care of what else is in front of him. Rookie, what it is, baby? So salute the Dion Sanders. That's why I play this theme song. I'm so happy for him. Not only because he's a brother, it's because he's helping brothers and he's showing a lot of people the way to do it. Hard work. Do not ever, ever give up. You understand? And his life is a blessing to God where everything he accomplished, he never thought he could, and he thanks God for everything. So I got to give Dion Sanders this moment. Close well, it out before we move on. Is, Al, one of my great sayings, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. I like that. We're going to have to put that on the shirt real quick. Okay, so let's go to our next topic real quick. Aaron Judge. All week, people were asking me if I was nervous. I'm going to keep 
for real. The only reason why I wasn't nervous, not because I knew he was going to sign with the Yankees. I try not to put too much feelings into it because I didn't want my, my heart broken. So in other words, I thought he was out. I thought he was leaving New York, especially the way we lowballed him. So when I, mm -hmm. I heard, I got a, a text at about 3 in the morning. Yo, Judge is a Yankee. Nine year, 360. I said, yo, my man, don't be lying to me, man. He said, nah, man. I went to ESPN and they had it on one of the on one of the articles right there where he signed. Now, my question to you, was this the right thing in your book for Aaron Judge to do? I know it was the right thing for the Yankees, but was it the right move for Aaron Judge? Well, first of all, just to let the, the viewers know, Al was praying to God every night the Judge would sign with the Yankees. Don't let him fool you. I'm telling you, I, I just mean, didn't think about it, man. Him, clover out and everything else, but no, in all <laughs> seriousness, um, I'm going to compare this situation to the Cardinals and Pujols, you know, going back before he signed with the Angels. Yep. Um, I think that when Pujols went back to the Cardinals, he made quite a few people realize the importance of loyalty, the importance of legacy. Um, and, and Judge was one that had that embraced the Yankee legacy. He wanted to be a Yankee, despite all the, the schmoozing going on. Um, he felt disrespected, and I think that he chose to go back and get the statue out in Yankees, Yankee Park there, you know, somewhere in the future, win a world championship, you know, go down with the great ones, become the next captain like Jeter, and all that, that doesn't cost any money, was more important to him than the extra $40 million the Padres were giving him. Right. Um, I think that I want to... I think the biggest kudos for you Yankee fans, uh, I think Harold Steinbrenner, the, the current owner's son of George, for the first time, stepped his ass up as an owner, okay? Stopped being cheap and said, you know what? I've got to be my dad here. So, I mean, I don't know if I heard He'll story, never but, be his dad. But, his well, dad got to the point where money didn't even matter to him, but get He was on vacation you know, over in Europe when this was going down. And basically, you know, he goes, do you want to be a Yankee? He goes, and, and Judge goes, I got a $400 million contract, 10 years. He goes, I had a ninth year, give you $40 million. Do you want to be a Yankee? Judge said yes, and all the rest is history. So, I mean, I think that you guys ought to be very happy your owner stepped up, who really has stepped up in the time he's been an owner. Let me correct you like you corrected me. It was nine years, 360, not 400. We got it. it was 10, 10 years, 400 million with the Padres. I That's said what the that Padres they offered stepped them. up and made them correct. That's what the Padres offered, but I'm talking about the Yankees. But go ahead. The Yankees offered eight years, okay, 320, okay? And that's what he said, I'll meet you in the middle, nine years, 360. Yep. So that's what he did. So I think that uh, it's going to be a great thing for the Yankees only, only if they're, they're right back to where they were at the end of last year. They still got work to do. Now, I'm right. hearing Korea. I'm hearing Rodon. I'm hearing the re-sign of Bertini. I'm hearing a lot of things, maybe a Brian Reynolds trade. Right. But the Yankees got some work to do. That offense was, was putrid the second half of the season. You can't go through another, another uh, year with no on-base percentage, guys. Okay, and guys who can't hit. So, you know, let's see what they're going to do from this point. Well, they got to re-sign Benettini, the contact hitter at over 300. We definitely got to fix the shortstop situation, whether we get Dansby from Atlanta or Correa. Now, Dansby would be a better fit because he'll be more of a Yankee. Correa got the issue where he talks shit about Jeter. They're going to mess with him all year round. And the thing is, can he handle that as a Yankee? Because you, you know the Yankees – you know, we are a historic team. Dumb Legends is not going to forget what Correa said about Jeter. And if he doesn't hit, the more he don't hit, the more he's going <coughs> to hear about it, right or wrong. That's right. So this is why this is the shaky situation for Correa. Though Correa's a better player. I want Correa. I agree. Humpty wants Correa. You want Correa. Or you say Correa's a better player. We all agree on that. But Dansby might be the better fit and the quieter fit. And also less money 
to maybe go get the round don't go. We got to get a pitcher. I'll be honest with you. I look at it differently with Swanson for you guys because you need a dynamic hitter, and that's not what Swanson is. He's a steady hitter. Right. You need Correa's bat. But I would love to get Correa either way, and we definitely got to fix the catcher situation sooner than later. I mean, we got a lot of situations we have to fix. But one thing I can say, if we can straighten out the starting lineup, catch and shortstop, the bullpen is magnificent. To be honest, we might be too much overloading the bullpen where we could trade some of those pieces to help get the pieces that we need. So you know, Jeff, well, we I got a lot of young you arms over Brian there. Reynolds. If you want Brian Reynolds, it starts with Volpe. Yeah. I can tell you that right now. Mm -hmm. Well, we have to change a lot of things, and I'm pretty sure when Judge signed that deal, a lot of that deal trying to have to be, uh, are you going to shop other people or you're going to stop with me? And I'm pretty sure <laughs> Steinbrenner and company say, no, we're going to get you and we're going to go after other players because that was an embarrassing exit we had last year. We got exposed by the Houston Nationals once again. So how, and they got how do you better? Yeah, how do you fix right that? Now, yeah, the Astros better. are better. They got the same. The Astros are better. But let's go to my next topic real quick. Um, let me keep it baseball while we're on baseball real quick. I'm going to bring you a name up. I'm going to say good fit, bad fit, and why. Try to cut corners on this because we got other shit we got to take care of. Your St. Louis Cardinals picked up catcher Wilson Contreras, uh, 243, 22 home runs, 55 RBIs. Uh, 815 OPS, five years, 87.5. Your take on this pickup. I know you're glad because you wanted somebody, but is this the guy that you really wanted in St. Louis? Well, as you know, I don't ever want any Cub in St. Louis. Facts. Okay, so that's what we'll start with. Now, with that being said, I'm going to tell you, Korea, or Korea, um, Contreras has impressed me, and I'll tell you what he did. Um, he issued a letter to the city of St. Louis today before his press conference um, stating that, uh, hey, I've been a uh, Cub since I've been 16 years old down. You know, the, the, the academy was near my house. I grew up a Cub. He goes, we grew up hating each other. And he goes, I'm still going to do those things you hate, but now you're going to love them. Right. And he goes, I'm, I'm committed to bring a championship to St. Louis and replacing his idol, Yadier Molina. He said that's what he always wanted to be. He felt like when Pools hit 695 in his last of bad burst of Cubs, that he said it felt like something special. He wanted to be with one of the, the uh, admiral or flagship baseball organizations that respect, um, you know, history. You know, the Yankees and Cardinals, Dodgers, those 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 type teams. Facts. Um, I thought that he had a great press conference, and he's committed to, to working with Yachty. Yachty's already committed to working with him to, to get his defense up and stop. Oh, that's wonderful. So, you got the best, so, best catch in the game defensively so teaching So I can say is I don't know what he's going to do, but I've never seen a better step forward when you've gone from a, a, a situation where you're the, the arch rival and hated, okay, over to your the team that hated you. Yeah, and, and stepping in. Job well done so far, you know, Wilson Contreras. Yeah, he got a, he got a big job ahead of him. You can't you can't go over there and come up short. You know that. St. Louis can treat him really bad if he goes over there and don't do anything. But I think this is a perfect fit. I think the situation called for him. And he just, you know, with Molina helping him out, God bless him, should have a nice five years with your St. Louis Cardinals. And once again, let's go to play and kudos to uh you know, I have to give kudos to John Mazalak. Um, yeah, it's the largest free agent signing in Cardinal history at five years, $87.5 million. But talk about getting somebody underpriced. I know, right? and a half a year. Yeah. So, I mean, it's kind of misleading. So, those guys, they know what they're doing. Exactly, exactly. Let's go to our second free agent. I, I'm picking three. There was like about 20 that went out there. But I picked my personal three which I think are going to make the most difference, besides Aaron Judge, of course. Xander Bogarts, Boston Red Sox ex shortstop, signs with the San Diego Padres. Wow. 11 years, 
280 M's, hit 307, 15 home runs, 73 RBIs, 833 OPS. I like, like this fit here, Jeff, but I want to hear your perspective. Well, I think short term, okay, it's a good fit. I think that two years down the road, you might regret it if you don't re-sign a Soto or a Machado. And if you look at the pecking order, Bogart's number four in that pecking order. Now, I kind of think that this is leading to a potential trade here by the Padres. Um, I'm, I'm kind of thinking that uh, somebody's on the block. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I know. You've been saying that. It might be Tati, like you've been saying. But my question to you, I know you're going to go there. You at least think they give it at least a half a season to see where they at with Tatis and then maybe start shopping them? Or you think they're going to shop them, like, now, basically? Well, when you make a championship game and then you add, you know, Bogarts, do you need to even see? And their rotation I mean, is still fit, right? They haven't lost anybody. That's what I'm saying. So they're ready to go. You know, and I mean, right now your infield is, you know, Bogarts is short. You move Kim over to second base. Cronesworth moves to first oh base. Oh, my God. Cronesworth. Where, where, Cronesworth is so underrated. That guy is fucking good, bro. But good. So, I mean, what are you going to do? Take Tatis in center where Grisham is? Grisham's a hell of a defensive center field. Yeah, you got to have so, Romaz I mean, out there, though. I like Romaz. So, to me, it looks like they're trying to push out somebody here, doesn't it? It's going to have to be one of them cash cows because Grissom and Will Myers ain't really eating like that. So, you know, when you got a lot of guys eating, strong for Machado, Tatis, you know, Soto, and now X, and Snell that signed that deal. And not to mention, uh, what's the other guy that signed the deal? The big horse they got there. What's his name? The big horse. They started pitching. Oh, Jeff. I love yeah. Musgrove. And Musgrove signed 100 million. So, I didn't even know Diego had money like that. I was telling my man, that cocaine must be good over there because they just get money out of nowhere paying all these guys. You ain't win nothing to spend money like that. But, you know, in baseball, there's no salary cap. So I guess you can keep running it up. But my thing is, at the end of the day, it's too much contracts out there. <clears throat> I'm thinking I'm, I have to agree with you since Tatis fucked up twice. They're probably growing tired of that shit. I see three times. Look at that. So they're probably growing tired of it. So I think personally they'll make a run in the first half to see where they at. And then maybe ship. One of them is definitely getting shipped. I'm, I'm going to say Tatis, but you set that first. Right, Tatis? Right. Now, and now, then they can fill up their farm system, whoever they get for Tatis. Get like seven, eight bodies for them. Now, the one thing I do want to mention for all you Boston Red Sox fans out there, I know that there's been uh, ripping on the management. You know, hey, you didn't get Mookie Betts signed. You didn't get Bogart signed, both homegrown. You got, you know, Devers coming up next year in the same situation. Well, I do want to tell you, there is help on the way. At Sportsbook Jeff's, one of his prized pupils is in double A for uh, Maine for the Red Sox. And I can tell you, the best hitter I've seen since Tony Gwynn and Alex Benellis. And I'm going to tell you something. Wait till you see this kid. You're going to forget about Bogart's endeavors in about two seconds. Yo, all I'm going to tell you, I love, so I I love, sure I I love, I love how you get your friend on my show. I love how you do that. But I want you to start putting my show out there the way you put this guy out there. You know, you put a lot of work on this guy. It's about the fourth time you mentioned this guy on my show. I need you to start doing some advertising for me. And yeah, this guy paying you, by the way? I hope no, he's, he's paying be, you or something because it's the fourth time you slid his name in my show. But be yeah, it's all good. Look at it. It's all good. But when he makes it up there, he better not forget about us. At least have some front row seats for us. That's all I oh, ask for. Las Vegas, I bet he would. Okay, brother. Okay, let's go to our last free agent. Like I said, there was multiple deals done. But I'm just picking four, you know, Judge, Contreras, uh, uh, Bogarts and now Trey Turner. 11 years, 300 M's, Philadelphia Phillies, got their shortstop. I mean, they had the young boy over there, but the young boy wasn't really just ready yet. Now you got Turner to me, who's one of the best baseball players in the game because he does everything. Your take on this pickup, bro. 
Well, I think it's a great pickup because, I mean, Segura, they let walk. Right? He was finished so anyway. Segura was finished. Right. Um, Trey Turner is an on-base machine. Contact. He struck out more this past year, you know, out in Los Angeles. They normally does. But he walks a lot. He gets on base. And I mean, he, he's a guy that you can build your lineup around for a decade. They've got those guys now over there. I mean, if you look at the Phillies lineup and everything they've done, the Mets done, the Braves done, I mean, right now, I mean, the Braves are, are clear third place in the National League East right now. You know? I'm not going to say that because of some movements being made. You have to win on a field. How many teams? Look, you look you at the Padres, how they better themselves the last year, right? right? But look now. what the Padres did. They were 22 games by the All-Star break out of the Dodgers. So all that, because you got big players, don't mean shit if you don't produce on the field, Jeff. You know that. They I pay for champions. The all they paper, are for champions. On paper, the Phillies look like the National League East champs now, unlike last year this time. Right. I mean, the Mets look like the second place team, the Braves look like the third place team. To me. <laughs> but That's one thing I could say like to, to back you up, Phillies did get better. They picked up another starter in Walker from the Mets, <laughs> who I think is a solid yep. fourth starter. That's it. He ain't going to be no one-two. Maybe a three-four, but he can get you innings. He'll get you wins. And, of course, the acquisition of Trey Turner. Uh, let's move on. You got anything you want to touch up before I move on there, brother? Just on the baseball side of things, I think the things to look for in the next couple of days is, uh, you know, what's going to happen with Korea and Swanson. Um, I think it's very interesting. Um, and also, uh, what the Giants are going to do. I mean, the Giants have been swung and missed twice now, and they get all this money to spend, so – they're in deep shoot, dude. Nobody going over there. That big ass ballpark. They ain't got no threats. Giants won their three chips yeah. already. Well, 20 years ago or something, they won their three chips. They're going to be fucked up for a long, long time. And, and they lost it when they lost the chance of getting my man. They would have got judged. They could have built around him in the next and couple of years. And I'll say something else, Al. Have the Dodgers taken a step back? I mean, are the Padres clear cut division winners right now? Think about that. We'll see. I mean, you got no Walker Bueller. You know, they lost, uh, was it Anderson? Yeah, Trey Turner. Already? Every Trey Turner. They every year they lose guys. Over. When they when they lost Justin uh, Turner. When they lost Seagull. I mean, every year they lose guys. They, yeah. They, they, and they, got they always step up. Players, but you know what? They're trying to reset the uh, salary cap situation. Right. And, I mean, I'll tell you what. Look out for Arizona. Now. <laughs> I think Arizona can sneak in there this year now. Okay. Real quick, because I got three more subjects. I'm, I'm, we'll probably be lucky to finish one or two. Great game at SoFi Stadium yesterday. It was actually boring for three quarters, where the Rams defeated the Las Vegas Raiders 17-16, which I call the Don King Bowl. Now, anybody that know Don King know that Don King is a lying motherfucker, a scammer. But he's real too. Don King will kill you. Don't get me. Don't get it wrong. He'll lay you down. But he's a scamming motherfucker. He scammed Mike Tyson his whole career. So my boy Pete Sabato is the one that told me about that name, and it fits games that are considered fluky wooky. That was a fluky wooky game yesterday. There was no reason in the world the Rams should have beat the Raiders. You got one team hot as hell. How does fish grease, like you be saying, ready to get on this playoff run, get a 14 or 13 point lead with a couple minutes left, already seen a victory, ready to play the Patriots next week, and boom, Don King shows up in the building. <coughs> Said, hold up, this game ain't over. I'm here. And next thing you know what happened, the Rams got all the calls. There was a big choco on fucking Crosby that the ref was right there. Crosby got choked like this. How the hell you don't call holding? And I'm not mad because I won. But my thing is you got to call that ref. They should suspend that motherfucker unless he was told what to do. My question to you is, how the fuck does this happen, Jeff? Well, Al... My statement to you is before that game was played yesterday, um, there's a certain guy that said, 
I'm not feeling it. And I, and I, we're not going there. Listen, listen, listen. We, Eva, you know what we I'm got. We don't got enough time now. for that, Jeff. We don't. I, listen. I, I'm you just look at you like look at your stomach was hurting. You didn't want to do the rated. I gave you your credit already. I'm I'm not going to massage you on top of that. I don't do that. Well, I'm just got saying, your but, credit. Let's move on. What the big deal was, I think, yesterday was no Super Bowl defending champion had ever lost eight straight games. They, the Rams have lost seven. Okay? You had a short week for the Raiders. They're, they're, I mean, um, they're all of a sudden favored on the road, and they didn't win on the road until, what, three weeks ago? <laughs> so all of a sudden, they're almost a touchdown favorite on the road. I mean, something smelled like ass. <laughs> if it smells like ass, it looks like ass, it tastes like ass, it's ass. Right, right. That's when you run to the stink. And I, and the funny thing was, I actually put a first half bet on the Rams, loser. No, no, I know, I know. I but then you were right about the game. But I had them three plus three and a half on a super tease up. But I didn't think the Rams were going to win. I thought no way in the world the Rams going to win that game. You know that. I was like, Jeff, I, I didn't know where in the world. And I ended up taking them in running when I seen that funny shit going on. Because we seen that funny shit. You know we seen it before that fight broke out. When that Eminem cat got knocked the fuck out thinking he was tough. That shit was funny. He walking around the book like he gangster. My man put that motherfucker to sleep. That shit was funny as fuck. But anyway, I don't want to get back into that. I don't want to be dry stitching on the video, even though I ain't giving no names. But believe it alone, Raiders are out the playoffs right now, would you say, right? With that schedule? They don't run the table. They have to run the table? Yeah. They have to run the table. Hey, man, let, let me see something. Hold up. They got, they got the Patriots. Hold on, hold up. Patriots at home. At Pittsburgh, Niners at home, and the Chiefs at home. They got their work cut out, bro. But I have to make a case they can win every game also. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say they've already won their three home games, and you know what that means to me. Yeah. One more, they'll, they'll, they'll get the, uh, the over three over and a half. Over three years, they're not going to get that. Wow. They got three games, though, to do it. Put a, well, I, like say, this, if they don't, the they don't beat the Patriots, they don't beat the Patriots, they're not going to do it. Now, real quick, before I go to my other subject, does Josh McDaniel gets fired? No. A lot of people calling for his name. They felt like there was no way they should have lost that game. And I'm going to tell you why. Um, Mark Davis is not a billionaire like some of these new owners. He owes $40, $50, $60 million to John Gruden. He's not going to get rid of McDaniels in year one of a five-year contract. We owe him another $40 million. And they have to pay a new coach for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's what MG said. That's MG not said that. Going to happen. Yeah, okay. MG said that. Yeah, I agree. So, I agree with y'all. From from that perspective, I totally and I agree. I don't believe. I'm gonna tell you something. All all these people wanting instant gratification of coaches and players and quarterbacks in the league. Well, if we had instant gratification back 30, <laughs> 40 years ago. There would be no Coach K. There would be none of these guys that, that we look up to as being the best. You have to have patience to grow your program. Period. Yeah, yeah, you got to give them another year. I know they got a lot of heartbreak losses. A lot of people like, oh, that can't happen, though. But it's not to the point where they're going to fire him. You know, they, they'll probably console with him, and they're going to tell him in meetings, you can't lose these kind of games. But I don't think it's going to be enough to push him out, especially Owen, like you said, Mr. John Gruden and Chucky, all that money. There's they no way. They just redid their entire infrastructure, like the Patriots. Right. They're, they're there for a couple of years. Right, right. Okay, let's switch over real quick. Give me your NFL top five teams, and I'm going to give you my top five. Or should I give you mine? Because I always let you go first. Should I go first this time? You go what you want to do, big boy. Okay. I'm going to stick. My son's going to disagree with me. My son does not like this team here. Matter of fact, he's going to get on after the new year. The young gunner, my son, Tim. He, he can't wait to get on talk that Yankee baseball. Uh, we're going to roll with the Philadelphia Eagles at 11-1. and one. How do you not put these guys number one? They lost one game all year uh, at home to the commanders, which a good commander team that a lot of people are not giving enough respect for, especially with Heineke behind the helm. 
Uh, 11 and one, that's my number one. My number two, I'm still going to stick with the Buffalo Bills. I just think that come playoff time, nobody wants to see the Bills. That's just my opinion. Number three, the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, every year, Andy V puts out a product. They still won and they still moving the ball. Uh, they might hit a war soon. They just lost to the Bengals. Good call on that. Uh, but I still got the Bengals behind them because they beat everybody else. And uh, number four, for the first time, I got my team on the top five, the Dallas Cowboys. I mean, what else do we need to do, Jeff? They came for me and you Sunday night big time. Uh, they're showing that they're a team to be reckoned with. And my thing is, are they going to choke? That's what everybody's worrying about. Are the Dallas Cowboys are going to choke? Because they got a championship football team. We got a four-headed monster. Not a three-headed, but a four-headed monster. You just can't choke. And number five, I got a split between the Niners and the Bengals, but I'm going to say Bengals since the Niners QB is hurt. So I'm going to go with Bengals at number five. Give me your five, Jeff. Well, my, I got basically the same same five teams, but in a different order. Oh, that's no problem. Um, my number five team is the Buffalo Bills. Okay. Okay. I'm going to tell you, I can't see them moving very much farther up to me until they make it to the Super Bowl. I think I've been fooled enough times. You know, the first time, shame on them. Every other time, shame on me. So let's see what you do against the Jets this week and Miami next week. So Buffalo's number five for me. Number four, that your Dallas Cowboys. And they're coming on strong. Okay. Right now, to be honest with you, Dallas is my number one team in the NFC. But until they pass the Eagles up, I got to keep the Eagles in front of them. But I expect Dallas in the Super Bowl. How about them Cowboys? But yeah, baby. Number three, okay? And it's based on my own thoughts. That's the Cincinnati Bengals. And, boy, they're coming on like gangbusters. Oh, my God. Good, I can tell man. you this much. Um, I think the Bengals uh, have another tough – actually, this is probably <laughs> the toughest test bigger than Kansas City. Can they beat the Cleveland Browns? You lost four or five straight times to them. What are you gonna do this weekend? That's their but, Achilles heel. They can't. They it's a you, bad matchup got, for them. It's like a fight. It's a Cleveland Tampa, Browns present a bad matchup for them. They got Tampa and Buffalo coming. Mm -hmm. But I tell you what, I think the Bengals have proven they belong. I think they can beat any team in the playoffs, and they can win a title. So number three, Cincinnati. Number two. Sorry, Eagle fans, but you're number two. Um, I don't think you're the best team in football. I can't put you number one. I'm not going to. Um, I think you're going to have a, a real tough fight, even if Barkley doesn't play for the Giants this weekend. Um, but I really like uh, the Eagles at number two. They'll probably make a championship game. They're going to lose to your Dallas Cowboys. And number one, and I think until beaten, I mean, yeah, they lost the Bengals last week, is the Kansas City Chiefs. They are the best team in football right now. They're coasting. They're probably not going to be challenged the rest of the way, even though, like I told you, I expect a tough game in Denver surprisingly come Sunday. But the Chiefs are number one to me. Yeah, but one thing I'm going to tell you, you said they had nothing to play for. They got the conference to play for. So don't the forget Chiefs, that. The Chiefs are the one team that don't. It doesn't matter. No, but listen, they'd rather play in Arrowhead than play at Cincinnati. Don't, 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 don't kid me, Jeff. You know an Arrowhead. They're close to unbeatable. Well, no they Cincinnati to, beat them there last year, they want to keep but they're the close to unbeatable. Four straight AFC title games played in Arrowhead going for five. They, 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 they love playing there. I mean, they give up 13 points in that building. There's no way in the world they'd rather play anywhere else. I don't think there's going to be an else. AFC championship game this year in Kansas City, though. Huh? I don't think there's going to be an a, a AFC championship game in Kansas uh, City. Later on, I'm, I'm going to see you. We're going to make a bet on that, all right? All right, real quick. One topic that I know you want to tap on that's very important. And if the peoples get bored, I'm sorry about it, but this is very important to the world of sports. Jeff, I, I got four minutes. I need you to tell us in four minutes. I don't want to cut you off, so run the tick in your head. You say you're good with numbers. I need you to work that good with numbers shit. Four minutes, because I gotta do I gotta do my spin-off. Brittany Griner just came home from Russia. Big situation, been in jail in Russia for 10 months. Talk to us and elaborate with us about this situation in four minutes, brother. It's all yours. I'm going to make this real simple so everybody can understand it. Um, Griner was arrested and detained in the Soviet Union, okay, for having a vapor pen. Okay, we all know that 
in multiple states in the United States is legal. Um, she spent a lot of time over the Soviet Union playing basketball, so it wasn't her first trip over. She brought that pen over, and they, to the upteenth, incarcerated her, okay? Was it done fairly? Absolutely not. What they've tried to do is they held out for a prisoner swap with an arms dealer who's a known uh, <laughs> friend to terrorists, okay? Oh, my God. And try to make a swap where the United States actually wanted uh, Brittany along with a, a Marine that's been stuck over there for a long time. Facts. And they, they refused to negotiate on the Marine who actually, and this is the funny thing is, went over to, to fight for his country versus sit during the national anthem for her country. And that's the ironic thing about it is, is we switch an arms dealer, okay, for as someone that did sat during the national anthem. And I think it's a really sad that we would leave that Marine over there, okay, before anybody else. Now, do we want Brittany home? Yes. But we got to start putting priorities straight, okay, and understanding what's important in life. It's not about politics, guys. It's about right and wrong. And right. the fact of the matter is, is that we're, we're letting a, a guy go over, he might not be able to do it tomorrow or the next week or the next month, but a year from now, selling damn arms over the terrorists again, you know, and coming over to Obama's over somebody, you know, that, that made a mistake and, and basically thinks they're above the law. I mean, we've got to stop putting athletes on pedestals, period. <coughs> okay? We need to start paying our teachers. We need to start paying people, our, our people that do work for us and around the world. And, and all these $50 million contracts, and that to me is laughable. And I tell you what, it's, you know, and I love sports more than anybody else, but our priorities are all wrong. And I'm gonna end it on that right there. That say, look, 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 listen. I'm gonna let you say it again. Say how you really want to say it. Our priorities are what? Our priorities are fucked up. There you go. That's all I want to okay. hear. Okay. Fucked up. And you know what? And I love sports. And I'm glad Brittany's home. But you know what, guys? It's about right and wrong. And you know what? This was not a good situation, even though she's home. End of story. Okay. Well, you broke it down. Thanks for elaborating, educating my, 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 you know, my people's tuning in. Whoever hasn't been, you know, tapping into it, like myself. I mean, I'm listening to you. I heard a lot more than what I followed up on. You got a lot of people also put it in comments. Mark Guillory put in some nice information there. Other people put in nice information. Guys, we're not ignoring you. I will respond to your comments after the show. You know what I mean? Hold on. Let me see. I don't know what he's talking about. Well, Mark Guillory's saying you don't know what you're talking about. I think he's starting, he's trying to start some trouble over here, but um <laughs> hey. Jeff, you... I'm choking. Jeff, don't get me going. You'll get me, you will have me. You know I'm sick. You know I'm sick right now. But um great show, guys. Um let me do the giveaways. Uh great work, man. And uh, hopefully, see, if Mark was able to get on on time, we could have heard him. Once again, I don't know what he's into, but he didn't get in on time. I mean, I'm not mad at him. I know shit happens. But if you slow, you blow. If you snooze, you lose. So we could have had Mark in here talking that Raiders shit. But now you got Jeff wearing his shirt, putting knives through it and saying they choked and all that. And I get it. I get it. And with that, Jeff, thank you. We'll catch up tonight. We got a lot of work to do. X me out, brother. Great job as always, bro. All right, bro. Okay. Sports book, Jeff, y'all. Okay. <clears throat> y'all waiting for him to X out because uh, in my side, it's hard to do it. Yeah, man, we're going to go through the summary later. Mark, I wish you'd have got on earlier. I had space for you. You know that once you laid on your thing, you know I don't just bring the people in because you throw my whole... You throw a curveball to my whole plan, but it's no biggie. No biggie. We'll get you next week. Just keep moving like we do. Let's go to the giveaways, guys. Give me a minute, guys. Okay, here we go.
<clears throat> Round three, giveaway one. The leader sports book, Jeff, was six. Brian got about four. Keith Vega got about three or four. I got the numbers in my book. And Tapia is making an amazing run, winning the last three out of four spinoffs. Let the best person win. Let's go. One through 20. Great show, guys, as always. You know we're going to bring it, man. Like I told y'all, if you see me slacking, let me know about it. If you ever see me slacking, let me know about it. Let me make sure everybody can see it. Here we go. One ball. Two balls come out, no play. The ball spits out, no play. We want one ball, one ball only. Let's go. Let me marinate these bad boys. We're going to have two more winners after today. Here we go. We got a winner, baby. We got a winner. I know you see it, baby, because I see it. Here we go. Number 16. Number 16, our first winner. We got my man, Big Ben again. Big Ben won two weeks ago his second win in giveaway. Uh, giveaway won round three, second win. This is the second win. Salute the Big Ben. All right, let me bring this back. Give me a minute, guys. Okay. Giveaway two. Ah, shit. I got to pick up these numbers, man. 21 through 40. Hold up, guys. Okay, well, y'all can see, I picked up 31 and 32. Okay, these are going in here. Nope. 21 through 40. No cheating, man. We don't do that here. Okay, let me make sure there's no other numbers that fell. Hold up. Okay, there should be 20 numbers in here. Those are all green and yellow numbers on the floor. It's all red and white numbers in here, so those don't matter. Here we go. Giveaway two, round three. Let's go. Giveaway two, round three. All right, here we go. We got a winner. I know y'all see it right there, bro. Got a winner. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. That'll be Sportsbook Jeff, his seventh win. So he's three wins away. From capturing the championship, we got Big Ben that won his second, Sportsbook Jeff won his seventh. Let's go to the summary, guys. Oh. Wow. Hold up. Give me a minute, guys. You just put all this away. Okay. Wow. Big Ben won second time in uh, three weeks. 
sports book ain't winning in a long time. He won again. Uh, <laughs> Sandra, I promise you, I promise you, your day would come. I remember when Miss Jess could never win, and she went on a roll and ended up winning round one. She was down like seven wins away from Raul or some shit and came back and was the first to 10 wins. I promise you, I'm not lying to you. It's all on the videos. Okay, let's go through our summary real quick. Uh, we talked about, about the uh, Major League Free Agency. Deion Sanders is leaving Jackson State. Wasn't a bad thing. I know the people feel like he abandoned them, but he did not abandon it. I mean, he did to a degree, but at least he hooked it up over there, got them right, got them, I think, another coach lined up. Uh, you know, he, he got that school on the map. But it was time to take care of some more work in his eyes that God put in front of him. He already accomplished what he had accomplished in Jackson State. Now it's the next chapter for Deion Sanders, the next chapter, which is Colorado. That's going to be his new chapter. And it's not a great school, so I like it. I like that he's going somewhere that they've been bad for a while, so nobody can say that he went somewhere that was already good. So if he flips that motherfucking program around, I don't want to hear nobody hate him. I'm telling you right, right now. And, and, and if people are mad because a lot of people are going on that, on that transfer portal, that's not on him. If people want to play with him, recruits want to play with him, you can't knock him for that. You can only salute him. And I hope that a lot of you guys salute him for that because he's whatever he's doing, he's bringing this new formula of how to win and how to win fast. And I hope it works on the next level right here with the Colorado Buffaloes, who are a very bad team for a lot of years. Salute to Deion Sanders. Uh, other news, we, we touched up on Brittany Griner in Russia. Jeff hold that down. Jeff broke that down. Uh, wasn't too wrapped up in that. I'm not too much on the politics, but uh, Mark Guillory had his own theory, said that, you know, Jeff was saying some stuff that he didn't agree upon. It's all good. Listen, speak your mind. That's what we do on my show. We speak our mind. But um, one thing I can say that I know for sure Jeff followed the story. So to me, he knew enough about it. That's why I gave him the platform to rock. I didn't know enough about it. That's why I just sat back. I sat back because because I'm not going to be trying to act like I know and I don't know. You know what I'm saying? So, um, like I said, the free agency just stays in New York. Turner goes to Philly. Ex Bogart goes to the Padres. Uh, so many pickups. Kenley Jansen to the Red Sox. I mean, so much maneuvering going on. And this is a great time for baseball, winter baseball. Uh, this is why all these sports is great, because even on the offseason, you got a lot of big things happening. And with that, and remember what I said on my message, do not do to others what you don't want done to you. You understand what I'm saying? If you go to your man's house and you steal something, you have to think if, if he came to your house and he stole something, you're going to want to wash him up or probably kill him. So stop doing shit that make you feel that you have the right to do it but then when it's done to you, you don't like it. And, and that's, that's the message of the day. You know what I mean? You got to practice what you preach. Me, for instance, I, I had to learn the hard way. I would do shit, thought I was slick when I was younger, and then I would get checked for it. So my new shit now is I think before I do anything, like I, I look at the whole picture. Should I do it? Is it worth it? So basically, that's what y'all got to do. Think before you make a bad move. And that's all I'm telling you, man. Because my wife, he always says, man, regret is at the end. So think about that. Al York Sports, the raw truth, open sessions and giveaways, TGI Friday, no drinking and driving. It's the fucking law. Y'all keep your head up. Love y'all.